Στέγιος. Φίλιππες. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my friend. Long time no see. This is crazy lockdown has changed the game completely. You can say that again, man. Uh, welcome to the third episode of uh, Marvel Talks. Thank you for the for accepting my invitation. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I know that we've been discussing about podcasts for some time now. Mm -hmm. um, let me say a few words to our viewers about you uh, so that we can begin our discussion. Coach Stegios Panayotu has dedicated his life in martial arts, leaving behind a successful career in IT. He is driven and committed to, to guide and train people from all walks of life into becoming the best version of themselves through martial arts. He has received multiple awards. Um, he's an international referee, right? Correct. He acts as a, as, as a judge in, uh, in many international events. And he has, as we shall see later on, he, he is a multi-faced uh, martial artist as well with training in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, in boxing, and he's also certified TRX trainer. Mm -hmm. Did I miss anything out? I think that's the pretty uh, serious ones. Stelio, can you have a look? Maybe your, uh, if the sound on your uh, other devices is on. Mopa I think it's... Is the... It's uh, on Max, on my device, the, okay. the volume is Max. You can hear me very well. I can hear you, yeah, very well now. I just, there is a bit of echo. So if you have any other devices, better to switch off the, no, the it's sound. only one device. Okay. So uh, before we, we move into the discussion, let me put a, a small video for our uh, viewers to see. Are you ready? Ready. Let's go. How do you feel about this video, Stelios? I feel very proud to see all, the, um, all my students, all the people in the, in the video, because I haven't seen them for so many months. Uh, all these guys have been training with me for a lot of years, uh, so they dedicate their, their time with me and in honing their skills in martial arts. And uh, it brings back a lot of good memories. So I'm really, really, I'm really looking forward to have them back, hopefully, not hopefully, next week, the week after, actually, we're going to be opening the gym. So really looking forward to having everybody back and start training again. So how was this lockdown for you? Well, it was pretty locked down. <laughs> everything was, uh, was everything just stopped one day. The 13th of uh, March, it was, uh, we had the, uh, the announcement from the president saying everything's going to be shut down. Uh, so immediately all our services stopped working. I mean, a week, a couple of weeks passed by me stressing about everything, didn't know what I was going to do because I couldn't provide any service to anything anymore. So after the, I started up, stopped watching news actually because every day I was watching news and I was getting more, more paranoid, more crazy about what's happening around the world. I started to weigh my options. I said, okay, I cannot provide any physical services now. What can I do? 
So the first thing that came into my mind, start making training videos for my students to, so they can actually train at home. So we made so far 50 plus videos, small videos, like 30, 40 seconds long, uh, suggesting exercises they can do both for the martial arts and for fitness. Uh, also in April, we started doing Zoom classes. Um, it was very weird in the beginning because it was the first thing, uh, first time thing, I'd never done this kind of thing before. And I didn't know how we, it was going to be perceived by the students. But uh, it was pretty good, actually, because we had more or less 10 people on average. It was day we had 20 people. It was day we had less people. But uh, it was good because, again, it was something that kept people uh, in contact with the gym. They felt that we, they were part of the gym. It wasn't just coronavirus stopped everything. We had that connection, even a virtual connection. And uh, it gave people something to look forward to. I mean, they know that uh, 6 p.m. there's going to be a class. Uh, 7 p.m. there'll be a class. So people used to train almost every day. So it was an interesting and creative time, the whole corona situation. Let us uh, inform our viewers that by sharing this live stream, they get the chance to win a private training session with uh, you. Uh, so to our viewers, feel free to share this live stream uh, as we go along. And what is the biggest lesson out of this lockdown for you, Stelios? The lesson is um, adjust or die. It sounds very dramatic, but in reality, it's, that's what it is. I mean, we cannot control everything, right? We cannot control the climate. We cannot control what the government is doing, but we cannot control the whole corona situation. What we can do, what we, what we can control is our own actions, our own energy, and what we can actually physically or virtually do, speaking with the whole virtual training classes. So there's always things to do. You just have to be open-minded to accept new ideas, new ways of operating your business, uh, no matter what business that might be. And uh, always looking for new things to, you know, think outside the box, try to, do, to bring in new ideas, new things. Because some things work for some time, some things might not work for some other time because of the whole, of the whole situ situation that might happen in around. So hey, I guess... Yeah. I remember our conversation because I should add that uh, you are also my coach and I know you for six years. During one of our sessions, I asked you about the 10 million euro uh, challenge hypothesis. And I told you, if I were to give you right now 10 million euros, what would have changed? How would that massive wealth impact on your psychology, on your creativity? on your resilience and your alertness. What's your opinion now about that imaginary scenario now with the lockdown? Well, my, my answer was, was, was and is the same, but now actually live through the, through the whole situation. Because if you had that kind of money, um, immediately the need to create, the need to provide something is gone because we, a big reason why we do what we do as a business is to get some money. Okay, you love your job, it's a passion and everything, all that, but you also need to support yourself to pay your bills and have a good life. So if you have that kind of money, I'm sure a lot of the creativity and the need to think outside the box and do different kind of things and different kind of energies uh, would be going out the window. So yeah, I think I'm glad I didn't have that kind of money. Maybe I'm crying inside a bit, but not having that kind of money. But uh, again, I'm not glad I didn't have that kind of money because immediately the creativity is gone. And you don't, oh. you cannot find a new, you cannot put yourself in that situation, that frame of mind to start thinking about new things to expand and, and uh, make your business go out this rabbit hole that is right now. So it's the hunger, but the, I think the, the hunger and the, the need to create is maybe eroded by no one will say no. I mean, let's face it, no one will say no to such a massive amount of money. But the reality is that the complacency that comes with the massive wealth can have a, a negative impact of your creativity and your alertness. And I agree with you. We are receiving some comments. Thank you, Stefanos Malikidis. I will come back to the comments and questions later on. Feel free to pause your questions. Now you gave me a path. You gave me a path talking about job, jobs and business. Now you left a promising IT career in 2010. 
to pursue your passion in, uh, in Mai Tsai and you set up your gene. What was the turning point or the pivot or the tipping point that inspired you to leave a promising career and to actually uh, set up shop, set up your own business? What was the pivot? Do you remember in 2010? So, yeah, like you said, I, I, I've been working in the IT industry. That was my uh, academic, uh, as, as soon as I finished my studies in computer engineering, I was uh, employed to one of the big uh, internet, internet service providers here in Cyprus. Uh, so in the beginning, was everything was great and everything was uh, new and everything was exciting. I was learning and doing stuff and learning stuff in the IT world. But uh, at some point, I just realized, I don't know exactly when that point was, but I just realized there was no passion behind it. I'm always a, a person that I like to evolve and learn new things and uh, expand my knowledge. But even though IT has a lot of things to learn, and of course, things are changing dramatically uh, in the blink of an eye, but uh, it, there was no passion behind it. I mean, I was just doing it for a good, steady salary, good, steady job, and that was it. There was no creation behind it. There was no creativity behind it. Um, and it was, it was a turning point for me because I said, okay, if I can't do, if I cannot continue to do what I've studied for four years in college and had this background of these seven years of a career behind me, I need to find something else to enjoy, you know, and uh, basically pay my bills. So. I was just looking for new things and new ideas of uh, what I would be able to do. And the answer was always right there in front of me because martial arts was in my life since an early age. Um, but Muay Thai, I was doing it at that point of time. And I was putting all this time of, uh, you know, getting more information and learn new techniques and attending seminars and uh, travel the world training. I said, okay, what, what, is, what if this is the answer of my future business? Uh, I didn't know it was going to come up to this point that I came up to here, but that was the turning point that I, I decided that martial arts will be my next venture after IT. So looking back, looking back 10, year, 10 years now, do you have any regrets? Not at all. Not at all. Do you, do you miss working in the corporate 9 to 5 environment? Maybe that uh, maybe some part of the mix, the security, the predictability, the, do, you, do you think that some of those ingredients have been compensated by something else in your new journey? W what is the new hype? What is the new thing that compensates over the safety, the security of your uh, previous say, safe career path? Mm -hmm. Not gonna lie in the beginning, of, the, of the, my career in the new gym. Uh, I won't lie that I, these thoughts came through my head that maybe it was a good idea to maybe keep the job and maybe have the gym in the afternoon or something mm. to those lines. But uh, I just realized that the more I'm gonna be, like, let's put it this way, the more time I spend in the, in the corporate world and rent and work, all that time was, nobody would see that time. And it wouldn't have any effect on my salary or my, uh, upgrading the corporate ladder, nothing, with, with no change at all. In my business now, I've noticed that the harder I work, the more time I put in, the more time I study, the more time I uh, get more information, I travel, I get new coaching techniques, to coaching programs, coaching techniques and everything like that. There's an immediate effect, positive effect on everything, on the number of students that come to the gym, on the number of, of, the, uh, of the money you bring in every month. So. I said, okay. I mean, I was always a firm believer of hard work, and I'm, I'm a product of hard work. I was never the ta most talented one or the most bright person in the world, but I, I always put in the time on something I was passionate about. So because I'm very passionate about martial arts, I, I put in the time, and I'm still putting the time. It's a never-ending uh, never journey. So I've seen that working harder, putting more time, uh, calculated, uh, into what I want to achieve is compensated what you said before of the steady job and the steady salary and the safety net, the safety net underneath having a corporate job. Because I know that you can correct me that the industry, many prominent players in the industry have chosen um, 
a different path, combining combining a day job and the martial arts business. So for you, and for people who do not know you, you are fully into this. You are 100%, you know, from the moment you wake up until the moment you go back to sleep, you are 100% into this, right? Is it correct that other people are combining the martial arts school with the day with, with the with the full day full day job? Yeah, uh, I don't think it's a matter of correct or right or wrong. I think it's a matter of choice. You have a Absolutely. choice, right? Uh, but let's put it this way: if you have half the time, half the day, even less than half, to devote yourself in your art, in your students, in your business, you're gonna have half, maybe less, of the results in doing so. So. Again, ever since I stopped doing my, uh, I quit my uh, IT job, my day job, uh, and opened my gym back in 2012, I never had a, a second job. So all my energy, all my focus, everything was to, pre to create what I have uh, created today. So it would make sense that it would have been doubled the benefits back because there's more time, I have more time to spend in my uh, business, in my students, in my, in my uh, fighters, in my athletes. So the result will come back sooner. So even though you might be doing something for 20 years, but you're spending half of that, those 20 years in your other job, so your energy is divided in both jobs, so you're gonna see less the results back. So, so you, uh, you, yeah. you are a believer of the, of the truism saying that if you are a priest and you operate in two churches, maybe you will not be as inefficient and productive preach, uh, priest as having one. 100%. And, and since we are talking about the launch of your of your business, the launch of the martial arts schools, let me ask you a question. Should every fighter become a trainer or a coach? Uh, quick answer is no. Could uh, any fighter become a, a trainer or a coach? Uh, again, no. Because what are the skills? Have... What are the skills that are required? So maybe you are a perfect fighter. Maybe you have the great defensive and offensive toolkit. You are a, a, a great round, uh, well-rounded fighter. Mm -hmm. And at some point, maybe you decide to go and become a coach. So what additional skills do you require so as to shift from fighter from executioner basically to mm -hmm. coach and trainer so first of all you have to want to be a coach uh you need to have a lot of patience because you're not dealing with fighters you cannot deal only with fighters you're not going to survive as a business i mean if you want to have it as a business you need to you're going to accept people from all walks of life from the average housewife to the obese uh, to the kid that's going through obesity to the uh, middle-aged person to a businessman has just had a couple of times, a couple of hours to to uh, release some stress from the work. So you're not dealing with fighters. So you cannot demand the same um, attitude or the same energy that you gave to your uh, training when you used to be a fighter. So patience is a big, uh, it's a big uh, thing to have in place. Uh, Again, it's everything is learnable. I mean, it doesn't have to be uh, being a good fighter doesn't make you a good coach in the sense that if you cannot have the patience and the knowledge and uh, um, the ability to break down anything, any technique, any punch, any kick, any what, whatever it is, to uh, to any person, from a five year old to a ninety five year old, let's say, then it's a is there's a problem there. You cannot transfer your knowledge. Basically, you have all this wealth of knowledge from a practical style of things, but you cannot give it out there because that skill of yours haven't been, uh, haven't been developed. Um, also because the, there's a growing, martial arts is becoming very, um, very mainstream these days, mm -hmm. mainly because of the social media of, uh, of UFC, Ultimate Fighting Championship. So many people are into martial arts right now. Even the, the average gym, that you go to, you're going to see a, high, a, a heavy back hanging from summer. Yes. Just yes. because it's That's cool to look or whatever. So it's becoming mainstream, which is a good thing on one on one thing, because more people come into the gyms and train. 
but so if there's more people and more gyms opening up here and there doing martial arts, so the level of uh, competition rises. So that means you as an instructor, as a coach, as a teacher, you have to evolve with times as well. You cannot just stay with things that you learned 1972 where your coach taught you this kick and this punch. It's not even about that. It's not even about the techniques. So techniques are techniques. Some things are, are standard, they say. It's about the coaching process. Because coaching from the 70s to the 80s to the 90s to the 2000s is changing all the time. It's, a, it's sports science. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a, the science of sports. Things are keep evolving. They keep becoming better and more specific. There's no more, there, there shouldn't, there is, but there shouldn't be any more random work happening in the gyms. Because you're dealing with people that come and train to train, that want to be trained, and you should you ought to them and to yourself as a correct martial artist and coach to learn all the latest coaching processes, techniques, whatever it is, so you can deliver a great and a safe workout. Because things done in the past doesn't mean are transferring to the future or are safe to be done in the future. So evolution with the times and being updated with everything that's going around around the sport. And in fitness in general, because fitness and martial arts, they come together. Without being fit, you cannot fight, simple as that. So um, it's very important for, for the coaches to, to stay up to date with everything that's going on. Even with the yeah. YouTube, I think, uh, I mean, the, the coach needs to be up to date also because the students, I think they are keeping up with what is what is happening in the in the industry and in the, in the sport as well, because they they can learn a tremendous amount of new techniques, mm -hmm. of new tricks, of new philosophies, of new combinations of martial arts. And I think that if you are a, a coach who is not really up, up to par with what is going on, uh, perhaps your students will feel that you are not up to date. Have mm -hmm. you sensed that this is true, that the students expect more or that they they that they follow what is going on in the world because of the social media and the internet i mean how does it affect your business this youtube explosion mm -hmm. with martial artists giving free videos free techniques free how does it affect you you know 100 percent it did change the the whole it was a game changer because now you have professional fighters great fighters they have all this free uh, they make all this free content for people to uh, to go and watch in their YouTube channel. So you got all these incredible fighters giving incredible information, incredible techniques and all that stuff. So now there is a, uh, you have something to be compared with. So if I show this technique a certain way and it's not correct, let's say, immediately you're exposed. Mm. That's why it's very important to, I mean, let's say, I'm talking about myself. I made a, uh, Let's say I, I want myself to I, I'm, I make a pack with myself to at least two times a year to go out of Cyprus somewhere else in a big gym in a somewhere that I've never been before to get trained to a top level gym and get really up to date information. And that uh, hasn't stopped since the day since day one since I started the gym. So it's very important. I mean, there's there's a wealth of information out there. Some not good, some of them very good, but uh, if the information is there. There's people there to receive those information and start asking questions, start comparing things that you're teaching, you're not teaching, things you're saying, so you're not, things that you're not saying. So many of the old school mind, not talking about age, much the old school frame of mind in martial arts, is doesn't follow foot with uh, what's happening right now. So again, you, you as a coach, as a teacher, as an instructor, you owe it to yourself and to your students to look for new ways of information and get more knowledge in so you can be updated so, to everything. So, so it, 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 it's a difficult industry, you would say. The, the martial arts industry with the different schools, different, is it a difficult, a, a highly competitive industry in Cyprus at least? Uh, I, like I said before, there's more gyms uh, opening every day, let's say. Uh, smaller, bigger, whatever, I mean, the, the fighters of the past that becoming coaches. Uh, so it's a, it's a growing industry, I would say that, I'll put it like this way. It's a growing industry. What would, what, what, what would you say that it's your biggest competitive advantage? I, ca I have my opinion, but I want you to, to give the stage to you and s tell us, hear from the horse's mouth about this sure. thing. <laughs> you call me a horse now? <laughs> 
Joke. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> so, Jokes on me. Uh, competitive advantage. Um, my uh, my never-ending uh, uh, wish to learn. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I made a pact with myself at least two times a year. I need to travel and get more knowledge uh, about martial arts as martial arts, the business of martial art, because it's a whole different uh, um, group of information from there. Uh, so every basically everywhere that I go, I'm going to receive the information as a coach, as a fighter, as an athlete, and as a business owner. Because there's always these three streams of information you can collect from anywhere you go from uh, from any gym. From, from the worst place you can train to the best place you can train, you can learn things to do or things not to do in your business, in your gym. Like this year, I was uh, I had the honor to uh, attend the first ever coaching seminar in uh, Mike's gym. Mike's gym is in, situated in Amsterdam, in Holland. Uh, the head trainer, Mike Passanier, he's developed masters of... Uh, of the world kickboxing scene, some names: Parahari, Tyron Spong, Gokan Sagin, Alistair Overeem. So we're talking about a person. And going back to the to the question you asked before, if a good fighter makes a good coach, again, he make all these masters. The guy's got one fight in his career. He's got one single fight, and he's like a phenom of information and wealth of knowledge. And he make all these monsters out of his gym. So one doesn't equal the other in in, the, in that topic. So, so you, can yeah, be, yeah. you can be you can be born can be born like a great coach even if you don't compete for years. You mean I mean you can have the qualities of a great coach yeah, even if you don't go through. Let me put it this way: it helps. It helps to go into the ring and have a couple of fights mm -hmm. to see what it is to to kick, to get king, to punch, to get punch. It helps. I'm not saying that a good fighter, uh, the, the the knowledge you get from fighting is not uh, valuable. It's very valuable, but one doesn't equal the other or exclude the other. So yes, it helps, but it doesn't mean that uh, not stepping to the ring it was not going to make you a good coach or a great coach. So as a business owner, because you very correctly separated the various components of what it is that you are doing, because you are an athlete, you are a coach, but you are a referee, but you are also, and, and on, on top of everything, you are also a business owner, and every martial arts um, school it is a business, right? So, what is the, what would you say is the recipe for succeeding as a business? Is it difficult? Is it different from the recipe for succeeding as a coach? The first thing I think uh, it's to admit to yourself that it is a business, because some people they have in the head you know, it's martial arts and. Uh, it's not a business and uh, respect to, yes, respect to everything. But since if you're not, if you're receiving money from people to train them every month, it's a business because you make a profit. If you think it's not a, a business, it means you're doing everything for free. So some, I, I, I've talked to some colleagues, they feel that even the guilt, uh, they, feel that they, they, feel, they feel the guilt of even promoting some things or they do on social media or even having the Facebook page. For them, it's like, it's a sin. So just admitting to yourself that, yes, it is a business and it's fine because you're receiving this fee per month and you're giving to them all this information and you're developing their skills, both as a person and both as an athlete. So you have to treat it as a business. So a business needs to be have a high quality product. That's why I said you need to upgrade yourself all the time to so be updated with everything that's going on in the martial arts world because things are evolving. Um, you need to have a, a great delivery of that product. So you have to be re respectful with your students, with your clients, with your members, and treat them in the way that you would like to be treated if you were enter any any martial arts gym or or uh, dojo. Uh, marketing is a big big factor of your uh, of your survival in the um, in the current world in the in the current world that we're living in. We live in the digital era, everything is going digital, especially now with the whole corona situation. So you need to be, if you don't know some things, you, there's many seminars that are teaching this kind of stuff about social media, about promoting, about Facebook ads, about Google AdWords, about all this stuff. There's many, many, even on Facebook, it's free. You just have to put in the time and start learning this kind of stuff. And you have to create content and put it out there so people can see what you're doing in your gym, 
you it's a, it's a great way to showcase your skills as a coach you know what you're doing what you're teaching to your students and you're present you're present in the whole uh, grand scale of things in the in the on internet um, is there a way to diversify your product so as to justify a higher price what i mean is that okay let's say martial arts schools offer a, offer a comparable product right mm -hmm. comparable uh, how can you increase the value of your services in a way that will justify in a correct way not in a manipulative way mm -hmm. justify a more expensive product mm -hmm. is there a way to do it in a legitimate way that people will understand and they will see the added value or, or, or the competition is really inflexible and really it's very difficult to offer something and charge more for it than the competition. Mm -hmm. How so, flexible is the competition? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So more or less there is a, an average price in the market right now of, of, uh, of the, the, the monthly fee, let's say, that's uh, been charging the martial arts uh, gyms and dojos. So a way to um, a way to make the, pr the higher price uh, more logical, let's say, would be to provide other services as well. So it doesn't have to be like I said, martial arts and fitness. They are joined together because without a good level of fitness, you cannot be a good athlete, right? So it's not just the techniques. If I'm doing three punches and I'm I'm gassing and I'm tired and I can't do anything after that. Mm. I need to do some push-ups. I need to do some burpees. I need to do something that that is going to elevate my level of fitness. So, uh, like here at the gym, we provide four different types of classes, five now, uh, coming back when we open the gym. They're providing circuit training classes, TRX classes, uh, in a way that are relevant to the sport. So we take in some some um, components of the sport, let's say. With the martial arts of other Muay Thai or kickboxing and we incorporate in the existing uh, training so it's a great way to provide more services to your students provide more classes you don't have to take two classes uh, um, just have two afternoon classes and just call it a day you can have morning classes you can have evening classes afternoon late evening classes so that so, way you know, yeah by devoting additional time to us to offer more classes mm -hmm. throughout the day, which is what you do in your uh, in your gym, uh, fight and fitness, inevitably you give a, a broader choice to the customer. You give more options as to when to train. So inevitably, this is a way to diversify in addition to the other classes which are complementary to the your main um, uh, the, the main sport that is the Mai Tai, right? So there is a way to do it, but it requires the uh, commitment and more time. So you need to increase the value that you offer. In in your case, the additional classes and the additional, you know, the extension of the opening hours of your school, basically. Mm -hmm which cannot be fine in some other schools, right? So this justifies a more premium product in your case, I think. Hmm? That's correct. Uh, do you have any war stories to share with us from the industry? I mean, without, we are not interested in talking about specific people, of course. Mm -hmm. Are there any stories showing how competitive the industry is or, 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 or showing that things maybe should move into a different directions as regards um, having a, you know, a, a closer federation and some more uh, closely sort of uh, applied rules for the Mai Tai sport. Mm -hmm. There's many war stories, many, many war stories. I won't say any of course, for of course. Uh, obvious reasons. Um, the most common, I. Uh, situation I can think is that one student, one good student, good fighter from one uh, gym might leave, might have, might fall with, uh, with the coach for whatever reason uh, of their own and just goes up into the gym almost next door to the, to the gym of his, uh, of his coach. 
I can, I can think right now, like two, three cases right, right now. So, okay, I mean, this, the logical evolution is for a student to, you know, to become a fighter if he wants, if she wants, uh, get more knowledge, maybe help out in the, in the, in the gym, and eventually at some point maybe start their own gym. So I would say there's right and wrong ways to do this thing because it's, a, it's an evolution. It's going to happen at some point. It happened to me. I mean, I read from my coach. And at some point, I started my own business in my own gym after training with my coach. I was so, going to ask you. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. As a coach, when you coach young students, mm. um, do you get the feeling that the better the student becomes, the more uh, you hone her or his skills, uh, the more demands? the student has and perhaps the more likely it is that they will leave and go and open a school is is there such a thing it's like in business when you're a manager you know mm -hmm. you want to manage and to grow your team some managers you know uh, are hesitant to grow their people because sometimes they fear that they may take their position or leave and open their own mm -hmm. firm. are there such thoughts running through the minds of a coach when growing his or her students to becoming champions that one day that person may take a different route open a school next to me or whatever or or it's part of the of the flourishing of a martial arts school part of the of growing athletes and champions how do you see that uh, question well yes of course it goes to uh, talking with, with colleagues and everything that uh, this situation these conversations go about um but if you come from scarcity, you think that that's the case all the time. You are like you are like I have a I remember a conversation I had with my with a friend of mine when I started first started opening the gym, started running the gym. He was saying to me, "So are you teaching everything you know to your students?" I said, mm -hmm. "Yeah." They said, "Aren't you worried they're gonna?" Sorry for my French. Do you, you worry they're gonna kick my kick your ass in the sparring? I said, "Okay, that's but that's the point. I'm gonna teach them because tomorrow they're gonna go fight. So they're gonna represent me. So they're gonna showcase that." Ah, they're good fighters. They're 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 expanding their knowledge. They have. I, uh, I'm gonna give them everything that I know, and then I'm gonna expand my knowledge, learn some more, teach them back again. So if I come from scarcity, I think that I, uh, I have the X number of knowledge, let's say, in my in my head, in my X number of techniques, whatever that is, and there's no more, and I teach them all. Yes, you're gonna start thinking like that. But if you're in the process of keep evolving yourself, your knowledge as a martial artist as a fitness professional as a as an instructor then okay if that person wants to teach they can open their own gym they have my blessings i mean uh, we're more than happy to to help them out but they're not me and i'm not them so i have my own coaching style i have my own personality and my own character they have their own so we're two different people so information shared by different people they're not going to have the same uh, effect or result because of the different um, uh, different traits that each person has. I will be able to transfer differently the information. They'll be able to transfer different the same information. Some people that will like me as a person, some people that like them as a person. So it's a, it's a, it's a people's, um, it's a people's drawn business. Like people who come to the gym, they're not just, they're not just gonna come to the gym just because they like the gym. They come for me, they come because I like what I teach, they like me as a person, uh, and they like to be around this environment here. So if someone wants to go to follow some other person, it means maybe you weren't the teacher for them, and it's fine. It's fine. I mean, it, that's why it needs to. Uh, they need to be uh, around different coaching styles. They need, they need to have different characters and teachers and instructors because we don't know the, all the same. Some people that like this, some people that like that, some people like. Uh, the more tough instructors, some people that like more light instructors, some people that like something in between. So because each person is different, it's good to have different coaches. And we will always have this, this diversity of uh, coaching styles and uh, personality traits. So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to give my work to my students. And if so be it, they want to have their own gym, I will be more than happy to done in the correct way, not behind my back, of course. So I... Uh, I'll be more than happy to to give them my blessings and maybe help them out with the with the business ideas and everything. I think that you mentioned a, a, a key word, uh, 
the scarcity. I mean, it's like in a business when you run a when you are a manager. If you if you are constantly afraid that your people will become better than you, I think this, this goes against the natural the natural cycle of growth mm -hmm. of a company, of a gym, of whatever. So you are correct that if if they grow and they decide to leave, you did your part. Your journeys have crossed in a you know in a flourishing way. And if they decide to part ways, I mean, there is nothing you can do. It's 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 part of the natural cycle of of it things, is. right? It is. Okay, so um, there are challenges in in. I mean, obviously, I can think of quite a few. But is is the turnover of, of students something that is common in in martial arts schools? Is it a challenge of the? on the business side of students coming and going. I know you have students since 10 years ago, I think. But I, is, Eight years is, ago. It, is it difficult to keep the majority of, let's say, uh, inexperienced students for many years? How, da, how do you navigate through that challenge, keeping, retaining students? Mm -hmm. uh, is it up to you? Is it up to them? Maybe they're just passing by out of curiosity. What do you do? You have any thoughts on the, the turnover angle of things? Yeah. So maybe they come and they go to somewhere else, or they quit. They stop mm -hmm. doing my tie and they do aerobics, whatever. I mean, yeah, whatever yeah. is the reason of the turnover. True. So again, it's uh, you have the turnover is is uh, it's, it's a real thing is happening. I mean, students might come and might stay for some time. Students might come and. I have students that are uh, which are with me since day one. So it, I think if a person tries the service that you're providing, the martial art, the fitness, the whatever it is, if he enjoys it, then it's up to me to keep that student in the sense that I need to evolve. It's, it's like a live organism. It keeps expanding, it keeps, keeps, mm -hmm. keep, uh, keeps changing shape and form. So I need to keep changing uh, shape and form of my training programs of things that I offer in the gym, of equipment I bring in the gym, to make it something interesting. I mean, nobody is going to, let's say, enjoy eating chocolate all day. Some boy is going to get sick of it. So no matter how good the initial reaction might be on the service, it's up to me to keep evolving this service, this product, and make it better, different, and provide uh, uh, diversity in the in the thing that I do. But, uh, yes, of course, you have the, your, uh, I call them parachuters. They just open the parachute, they just land, and then they disappear. You, you always have that in any kind of any line of work, let's say. But um, yeah, like I said, martial arts is becoming more mainstream. People, you don't have to have, don't need, you don't have to be a fighter to do martial arts anymore. Back in the day, most of the people that are used to martial arts was either tough guys that they wanted to fight in the streets or they wanted to compete in the ring. So this is not the case now anymore. People, I like here at the gym, I have, I'm training people from four years old to 71 years old so wow, it's, wow. It's about anyone, yeah it's about anyone who wants to have a a, a, a different type of workout to uh after a stressful day at work to come and hit the bag to something and uh, productive exercise and release that stress in a healthy way uh some people they want to shed some weight and look better uh for themselves for the spouse for their husband for the wife for the girlfriend whatever it is uh for their health so people don't want to just have a place to communicate with other like-minded people. So, yeah, I mean, we, we try to, uh, me and my team, we, we try to keep changing things. We keep the core, our core values, uh, and we keep trying to make things even better each time, each year, each month. I know that you, because you have a large number of students and you travel quite often for uh, business, you are also assisted by, um, by some uh, senior students who are co-trainers co with you, right? So Correct. you have managed to create an ecosystem uh, of, uh, of people who, who create small groups and small teams. And you do it also now, I think, in the outdoor training, is this correct? That's correct. That's correct. So now, because yeah. of the whole situation of the corona is happening, we are until we open uh, the doors of the gym again on the 15th of June. Every day, from Monday to Friday, we organize uh, me and my team again. I want to mention the names if it's okay with you. 
Sure. So it's Constantinos Bartholomeu and Antoni Sofroniu. Uh, so they've been key players in the whole uh, development of the gym because without them, I, would be, I wouldn't be able to travel and get those information and those knowledge and all that stuff. So they've been key players to the uh, to fight and fitness. And I really want to thank them publicly for, for doing so, for being standing by next to me all this time. The kudos go to Doris and Constantinos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely, 100%. And, and uh, since you you have mentioned about the why people come to join a gym such as yours, other than fitness, what would you say are the key benefits of people taking up my Thai? Could you give us some, maybe from feedback you mm -hmm. attract from your students? What what are the the joys or the benefits that they accumulate by engaging in Mai Tai? So I have many, many people are putting fitness as, as number two reason why they come to the gym. And the number one reason was stress relief. I mean, I mean more and more people are working in the corporate world, putting a lot of hours in, uh, hard, work at, at, uh, hard day at work, maybe hard day at home, and they just come to the gym and they have one hour for themselves one hour to hit the back, to shadow box, to hit the pads, to even speak with people from all walks of life, but they have the same, uh, the same, um, uh, they're like-minded. They have the same, let's say, common reason why they're here. They want to become better. They want to feel better. So stress relief was surprisingly very, um, very common among many people that are uh, reason why they, they don't want to join the, the gym. Of course, fitness is always there because you, you come, it's a really good fitness level you can you can uh, gain by doing martial arts. Uh, but stress relief was uh, was number one among many people. What are the other ones? Uh, yeah. Fitness, confidence, uh, maybe? Confidence. Definitely, definitely confidence. I mean, you, put, you come first day at the gym. You see all these people, they've been training for some time. You see there's, the skills are better than yours. They can, the, the, the body, let's say, might look better than yours initially. So you feel a bit intimidated. But we try to create... And I think we have succeeded at trying to create community of a welcome community that uh, accepts everyone in. It doesn't, you don't have to look a certain way uh, or have a certain uh, weight or, or anything like that to, to be joining the, our, our, in our gym, in our team. Everybody is welcome. If you are come here, you're respectful and you are respectful for yourself and the people around you. We are, we're gonna give, you're going to get that back tenfold. So again, your confidence comes with the training. You learn more things every day, you're becoming better, you're becoming more fit. Um, so definitely has an immediate effect on your, on your self-confidence. Do people spar? Yes, they do. At, uh, have you have you noticed at which point does a young student, a new student, right, feel convinced to step into the ring? How do, do you encourage them? Do they see other people do it and then they they say I want to kick and get kicked and punch and get punched? Uh, so as, how, how do you see the transition? Mm -hmm. Stepping what 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 does it take to step into the ring? Have you noticed any 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 patterns? Mm -hmm. What leads somebody to decide to spar and to fight and to get into the ring? So um, first of all, we don't make anyone spar here. You either you have the option, but it's an option that you can choose to activate any time for you want. So uh, we leave it up to them. We we always encourage people. We tell them, and we have different systems we put in place. I mean, you, you're not gonna go on the first day. You're gonna spar somebody who's got a 20 fights. But even if you spar with them, we we structure things in such a way that even the person with got fighting experience, I mean, by winning multiple belts or uh, titles or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have technical sparrings that we, I give specific uh, drills that both they need to apply and, and, and abide with. So in general, the, except on the fight team, which is a different, it's a different case, but in general, our sparrings are, uh, are low in intensity and high technique because through technique, you're going to develop any other skills you want. You go 100% so like try to knock each other out. Nobody's going to benefit out of it. Uh, sparring is not part of the natural development of a fighter. Yeah. Of course it is. Of course it is. But so, so yeah. you, but you cannot, you as you say, you cannot force someone to step into the ring 
uh, unless they decided themselves. Yeah, let me put it this way: sparring, apart from fighting, it's the it's like the. So you do your back work. You work on the backs. You do technique. You are doing uh, strength and condition, your circuit training, and all that stuff. You do pad work. All these elements, they make up sparring because you can take the power and say you put 100% power on the back, using a sparring, not 100%, but the techniques you've developed, you hit in the back. You take the accuracy that you need to hit the pads and develop that and, and take that, transfer that accuracy on sparring. You take the, phys the physical fitness and the conditioning and the strength you develop through the circuit training and transfer that to sparring. So sparring is not one thing. You're not, you're not gonna become better by sparring every day. You're gonna become better by dissecting each part of the, of the whole process give the, the uh, correct amount of emphasis on everything, develop everything at a good level, and then put them all together, inspiring. So the, uh, the, um, the fighter, of course, need, they need to spar because that's what they're gonna do at the end of the day when they go into, into the ring. But uh, someone who spars doesn't mean they have to fight in a, in a real fight in a, in a tournament or anything like that. It's just uh, a evidence, let's say, to yourself that, okay, this technique that I learned last week actually works. Um, try to this guy and stay in a safe manner. Again, I don't have to kick 100% to uh, to practice one technique. I can go 50, 60, 70%. Both are safe. Both enjoy the good sparring. And they can go have a beer after that as, as friends and not as enemies because they try to knock each other out uh, during the, the sparring session. So mutual mutual respect really through the, to the people doing sparring is very important. You don't want to have any injuries. Um, yeah, but sparring, it's, uh, again, it's, it's an option, but not everybody uh, is, uh, they should do it if they don't want to. But most people oh, feel great no, after, yeah. No, yeah. after a sparring. Yeah, yeah. It's a great feeling. There, there is something ancient about mm -hmm. hitting and being hit as opposed to hitting a punching bag. No, right? definitely. Punching bags don't hit back, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. So you cannot get a real feedback of what it is to actually do that technique to a person. If you hit the back, the back doesn't hit back. So you don't know if you're dropping your hand, if your chin is up high, or you're, you don't have a good base and you don't have a good balance. But so it keeps you accountable. Put it this way: it keeps you accountable when you're sparring someone on whatever you're doing, if it's right or wrong. And I think because we 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 did quite a few sparring sessions together, and I did in the past as well. The sparring, I mean. From our, from our friends who are watching, who are not really into martial arts, it's simply you step into the ring and you play not full contact, play, you, play, play. You, you play. So sparring is one of the few things that gets you really in the zone. So when you spar, because of the adrenaline and the hormones and everything, you forget about everything. Your mobile phone, your worries, you are in the moment, right? In the flow. So it's an incredible feeling because you are, able, you are able to immerse into that specific moment. And it's a way of meditation as well or mindfulness, right? Mm -hmm. It's one of the... So I think sparring is it's something that can uh, put into the test everything that you're learning uh, in the training, right? True, 100%. 100%. And I know that because I, I worked for many years in the legal industry I, with accountants, with lawyers who are highly stressed, and I know that you have many uh, professionals as your students, mm -hmm. accountants, tax advisors, lawyers. And uh, really, if you are watching, guys, this is an incredibly, incredibly worthwhile workout. Not, not, not the sparring necessarily, but the Mai Tai training, the way that uh, Fight and Fitness designs and executes the trainings, is extremely efficient for the stress relief and the confidence building which you can take with you. I'm doing a pitch for you now, but it's, it's the reality. I'll take it. I mean, you go you go into the, the, the training, and when you leave, you are relaxed and you are in different place. So, I mean, by all means, you are encouraged to try out uh, uh, some trainings with Steyo. I can vouch for him because I took since 2014. We are coming to a close now, mm -hmm. Steyo, uh, near one hour. Okay. I would like to ask you uh, 
very briefly, what do you think about the online training? Uh, because I, there is a whole industry around it. Mm -hmm. Now they have the opportunity to go through Zoom to do some um, online activities. What are the reactions from people who compare this with the real thing uh, inside the gym? Do you have any any thoughts on the online training pros and cons? Any mm -hmm. advantages of yeah. doing it online or going online training? Yeah, it's funny you say that. Uh, in January, I attended this seminar, this fitness seminar. The, the The name of the seminar was Future Fitness. It was about new ideas and things to come in the future in the fitness industry. And one of the segments was online training. It was about Zoom specifically. And I remember not thinking, Zoom. sorry? Zoom, Zumba. Zoom, Zoom. <laughs> Even Zumba, they're doing Zumba on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember my reaction when I, when I saw that segment, like it's an interesting idea to train people online, but maybe it doesn't work. Maybe how can you actually, if you're not right there to, so I was a bit skeptic about it. And then fast forward three, four months later, with the whole Corona situation was happening, so the people didn't have access to the gyms, and we're doing three Zoom classes every day. So, okay, you're not gonna be able to transfer the same, um, the, the same energy, let's say, through a, a virtual screen, a virtual training class, because it's a different, you are right next to the person and you, you encourage them, you give them the information, you correct them. It's not even near, but it's a good alternative because what are the alternatives right now? If you don't have access to a gym, you can train by yourself. Yes, cool. But uh, even in a, in a Zoom class, if you ever experienced that, you can see which people are training with you. It's a common instruction by the instructor. Um, I, I feel like from personal uh, experience that I feel the need to make an extra effort to motivate people because I don't have them next to me. So I'm... I'm Doing, an, uh, doing myself plus more to give the people more uh, energy or more instruction or better, to push them more to do the exercise and have a better result. Um, again, I'm not, it's not the real thing, different to have you in front of me and do, doing pass or doing sparring or something else, but it's a, it's a good alternative considering the situation right now. And actually some people, they, uh, they mentioned that they actually wanna keep it after we open up the gym because for whatever reason they are, they cannot, they're working late hours or they are they're having a small baby at home and they cannot, they, they don't have the luxury to leave it to their parents or somewhere to take care of the baby. So being at home and be able to do that, your uh, your training, maybe it's a, it's something that will be a greater demand in the future. I mean, so far I was telling you before that we, uh, we filmed 40 hours of Zoom classes from uh, April till last week. So we started doing the Zoom classes and started the other training. <laughs> So there were days that were like 18 people, there were days that were 10 people, there, was days that, there, were, there were days that were less people. People that showed up. So it means if the people are showing up, it means it works. I mean, they enjoy it. They have a good work out of it. And you also so, kept in touch. You also kept the fire burning. You know, you, you kept the fire burning, not, maybe, maybe not on the high uh, degree, but you kept it being, you kept the warmth Definitely. of the relationship between the, your ecosystem. Uh, okay. Stay you. Um, let's see a few comments here before we wrap this up. Stefanos Malikidis. Hi, Stefane. Stay you, Spanayoto is the most professional person I have ever encountered in the area of martial arts. Keep working hard, coach. See you as, as soon as the gym reopens. Thank you for your work. It's all Thank for you. So, Diris Pafidis, you are the best. Ex colleague from the IT world, so Diris. Hi, Sotiris. I also know Sotiris is a great guy. Excellent. And Spiros Yaseminis from Nicosia, punching through the barriers of success. Way to go, bro. Spiros is a wordsmith. Thank you, Spiros, for joining and for watching. Christos Panayotu. Hello, Christos, my friend Christos. Thanks, guys. Very interesting. Uh, thank you, Christos. Uh, let us say that now that... Hopefully, this situation with the COVID is closing. We will remind you that uh, the Fight and Fitness Club is reopening on the 15th of June. And right. you have the strongest recommendation on my part. I am not biased, but I am to go and try it out. Really, it's 
it's uh, an experience that will certainly add uh, and it will help right now going into the new post-COVID era uh, for uh, personal development, for fitness, for stress relief. You can try it out. You can find uh, Stelios everywhere. He's really active on social media. Uh, you can check out his website. Uh, you can check out his, you can send him a message. We will see uh, from the people that share this uh, live stream, uh, a, a ballot will be made. We will be informed as to who will, who has won the private training with Stelios. This brings us to a wrap. And I, I give you the stage to say a few final things, Stelios, about you, some messages you want to convey and we will call it a day. Uh, first, I want to thank you again for giving me this platform and your time to uh, to share my story, my personal business story to your, uh, to your audience. Uh, I was joking before, but I was serious. Hopefully, you can get to the Joe Rogan Experience uh, stars and get sold to uh, for 100 million US dollars in Spotify. You know, who knows? Somebody's got to do it. Why not you? Um, I just... I want to leave with this comment. Just uh, it's been proven that people who are training and they have an active lifestyle and they're keeping healthy, they have better chances to fight any virus. So uh, my urge to people is that keep guys keep training, keep doing something active. It doesn't have to be martial arts; it can be fitness, it can be zumba, it can be any type of sport. Um, keep working out. You are you owe it to yourself. Uh, and you, I think from you, are from from you are also answering to our last question by our friend Nikos Kaliga. Do you think fight training helps you be more confident in your workplace? 100%. 100%. And it gives you the ability to, to face confrontation, even if you don't use it, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't go out and start kicking and punching people. I mean, the, the fact that you feel um, well-grounded and fit, that gives you a boost regardless of whether you apply it or not. Definitely. Correct? You don't need to prove to anyone any, anything. Uh, so whatever confrontation you come across, you, you have the confidence within you, because it's all about starting within you, uh, in your spirit, in your core, and you don't have to prove anything to anyone. So you can stand up for yourself without physically, um, you know, have to do anything about it. So again, speaking from experience, you helped me uh, a lot with my personal life my whole journey in martial arts, even before coaching, just being an athlete and a, a student. So definitely, um, I would say that 100% helps with your confidence level. So thank you very much, David. Thank, thank, thank you to you our you. viewers. And uh, have a wonderful rest of the day. And we will be in touch soon. Take care. Take care, guys. Thank you, Felipe. Bye-bye. Thank you. Você sabia, né?